what I do here at Athena is I'm a visual kind of guy, as you can see. So we monitor all of our students. So the middle four columns, this is freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. So we take the RTI triangle and we made RTI columns. So these are my tier three kids, freshman class, who came to me as ninth graders who did not have a credit under their belt. Typically our eighth graders take LOAT, so they come to us as ninth graders and they already have a high school credit, meaning LOAT, under their belt. These kids did not, whether they did not pass it or they came to us from another district where LOAT was not offered at eighth grade, these kids did not do not have a high school credit prior to ninth grade. Um, these kids here were less than five credits. This is my sophomore class. So these kids, by the end of freshman year, you should have had living environment passed as well as integrated algebra. These kids owe uh, one or more of those gatekeeper exams and are, are significantly deficient in credits. And these, so these would be my tier three. My tier two kids are anywhere between five and five and a half credits accrued in ninth grade, but they may also need a gatekeeper exam, meaning they passed integrated but failed living or vice versa. Our sophomores go juniors, so pink represents juniors. My juniors should have now passed integrated algebra, living, and global, global in 10th grade. So they should have taken three of the five gatekeeper exams and they should come to us with 12 credits. So kids who are significantly behind in credits and exams are considered tier three. Kids who are slightly behind in credits or one of the gatekeeper exams would be considered a tier two. The rest of the junior class would be considered tier one. And then looking at our seniors, so by the end of their junior year, you've now taken all five gatekeeper exams. So kids who are really behind in credits and gatekeeper exams are tier three. And kids who are slightly behind in credits and gatekeeper exams are tier two. The goal is for these students to give them the intensive supports that they need through Twilight, through AIS, through our Academic Learning Center. So they are able to cross the stage and uh, get most of these kids either are going to be June or August grads. So the kids to the right are my 12 plusers, and this column here are students who we are able to get them the gatekeeper exam via the pathways option that was recently passed by New York State. So the far right are our students that we monitor for behavior. So these are students as of the first of the year that have had three or more referrals since, the, since January 5th, who came back from Christmas break. And these students have uh, two referrals since uh, the first day back. So these are our at-risk students behavior-wise. And then the big one over here is attendance. So we decided to take uh, all of our students and take the 5% most at-risk students for regarding attendance and place them up here and then the next 15 percentage uh, of our 15 percent of our students would be a tier two so the color just corresponds to the grade level as you can see in the middle so if they have a yellow dot they're up here for at least another category and if they're up here for a red dot that's the trifecta at risk kit that means they're up here for attendance they're up here for academics and they're up here for behavior. So a red dot is the trifecta where we are utilizing our wraparound team, our district supports, as well as our counseling, family support center, et cetera, because these are the kids who are most at risk. So in order to create effective AIS models, one of the things we do here at Athena is we monitor all students' credits that they've accrued as well as exams that they have um, passed and then looked at where are our, our needs. So in the case of uh, algebra for example, I meet with the math teacher leader to review the students who still need the algebra exam as one of the five gatekeeper exams in order to graduate. So we have an exam list 
whether it's for the integrated algebra exam or it's for the common core integrated algebra exam. And we then make sure that these students are getting the supports that they need. Is it skill? Is it will? Is it both? And how can we service that, uh, those needs of those students within their schedule? So whether it's a teacher leader or whether it's my point for math AIS allocation, we make sure that every single student that needs integrated algebra in order to graduate is getting some system of support prior to taking the exam. So I meet with the math teacher leader every probably three to five weeks and I'm reviewing what are we doing to get Johnny or Susie up to speed with where they need to be. Are they attending? Are we holding them accountable? What skills are being addressed? Are we, how are we preparing them for the upcoming January exam? And we had 51 students retake the algebra exam and 27 of them passed it. Um, I think the relationship that I have with the teacher leaders is critical. Uh, in this case with Ellen Shoemaker meeting with her to make sure that all students are accounted for and getting those systems and supports necessary to give them uh, an opportunity to receive a passing score on that exam and ultimately get their name erased or the need erased off of their name card up here on the data wall. This data wall is a combination of information you can get from Dedication, Infinite Campus, and IEP Direct. So we monitor all of our uh, IEP students and 504 students and whether or not they have the safety net. We, ma we monitor how they are getting the credits. Uh, we indicate which exams they are lacking for graduation as well as their total number of credits to date. And as students do accrue credits through Right Reasons, through Twilight, we monitor that on a spreadsheet and then we, we can come in here and reflect that on the data wall instantaneously.